by good afternoon, good evening, or is it good morning? Whatever time you are watching this video tutorial, glad that you are joining us for today. Today's topic is prime factorization. So get out your composition book, pen, pencil, and let's take some notes. So we got to review just a little bit. I think all of you guys are familiar with this, but prime numbers, what are prime numbers? Remember, prime numbers are numbers that only have two factors, two factors, one and itself. You see the red star there, that means take the notes, but prime numbers only have two factors, such as 11. The number 11, the only two factors you can multiply to get 11 is one times 11, right? Prime numbers. And then composite numbers, well, Composite numbers have more than two factors, such as 24. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8. I think that's it. Yeah, I got them all. Okay, so prime, prime numbers, only two factors. Composite numbers, more than two factors. Okay, so let's move on. So we're going to talk about prime factorization and prime factorization is just taking a composite number and factoring it and factoring it and factoring it until you have all prime numbers that's it for example if we factor 18 prime factorization we would get two let me peek here i forgot what the answer was oh we would get two times three to the second power because, watch, 2 times 3 times 3 is 18. That's prime factorization. You keep factoring and factoring the number until you have all prime numbers. Again, like 36. If we factored 36 to all prime numbers, we would get 2 to the second power times 3 to the second power. Or 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. What does that equal? Well, that's nine times four, 36, prime factorization. So how do you factor a number? Well, there's, there's a lot of different methods out there. Uh, the one I always like to use, uh, some people call it the Christmas tree. That's the one I like to use. It's method uh, two. I like that method where you just factor and factor and factor until you have all prime. And it kind of looks, you know, the reason why they call it Christmas tree is because it kind of looks like a Christmas tree. You know, and, and you stop factoring when you have a prime number. For example, when I factored 60, I did 2 times 30. I can't factor 2 anymore because it's a prime number. But over here at 30, I factor 2 to 15, and I factor 3 to 5. And now you're done. And now you have all prime numbers, and now you can write the equation. And so you can say the, the prime factorization of 60 is 2 to the second power. You can say 2 to the second power times 3 times 5. Or some people would just write two times two times three times five. That's fine too, but you know, we're a little smarter. We can write with exponents now. Okay, yeah, we can. Another method is this one. I, I very rarely use this method, but some of you guys might like this. And so here they just write 60 and then they factor out a two. So now if you divide it by two, you get 30. They factor out a two. If you divide by two, you get 15. They factor out a three, you get five. And again, you still end up, you know, you still end up with the same prime numbers. Okay, so whichever method you prefer, you know, look at that, take notes on that, whichever method you like, just use, okay? So here's what I want you to do. Press pause and write down these numbers and find the prime factorization of each. Use whichever method you want to and we'll discuss tomorrow, okay? And let's just review real quick. We're gonna talk about divisibility rules. Just to review, refresh your memory. Some of you guys who did not have me last year, you might want to take notes on this, okay? And, and then maybe some of you who did have me last year, you might, might want to take notes on this. Uh, the divisibility rules. All of you guys know the divisibility rules of 2, uh, 5, and 10. I mean, you just know that. You know right now that 222 is divisible by 2. But you also know 222 is not divisible by 5. And you also know 222 is not divisible by 10. Okay? So you already know the divisibility rules of 2, 5, and 10. You just know that. What you probably don't know, if you're a new student, you didn't cover this last year, is the divisibility rules of 3, 4, 6, and 9. So 
a number is divisible by three if the sum of the digits is divisible by three. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's just look at this number. Let's just write this number. Well, oh, goodness gracious. One, five, um, zero. Okay, see that number? 150. That number is divisible by three. Why? Because the sum of the three digits is six. It's divisible by three. I can write this number. Four, five, two, what's that? Seven, 11, one. That number there is divisible by three. Because the sum, I think, is 12. Is that right? 10, 12. Yeah. So when the sum of the digits is divisible, or when the sum of the digits is a multiple of three, or divisible by three, then the number is divisible by three. Okay? That's the divisibility rules of three, and nine's the same if the sum of the digits is divisible by nine. So you see that number there? That number is not divisible by nine, because the sum is six, and six is not a multiple of nine. But if I write this number down, five, that's, that looks like an S, five, two, four, all right? What number must go there to make this divisible by nine? Well, look at the sum. The sum right now is seven, 11. So what number do I need there? Well, if I put a seven, 11, if I put a seven there, the sum would be 18. That number is divisible by nine. And I can, what happened to my calculator? Calculator went bye-bye. But if I take a calculator and I take 5,247 and I divide it by nine, it would come out uh, divisible by nine. It, there would be no remainder. So three and nine, okay? And then six, hey, if a number is divisible by two and divisible by three, it's divisible by six. Divisible by two, divisible by three, then it's divisible by six. So if you say, yes, this number is divisible by two, and you say, yes, this number is divisible by three, then guess what you're saying? Yes, it's divisible by six, okay? Um, and then four is kind of the most confusing one. You're just looking at the last two digits of any number. And if the last two digits is divisible by four, then the number is divisible by four. So for example, this number is not divisible by four because the last two digits, 50. 50 is not divisible by four because 12 times four is 48. 13 times four is 52. Um, that number, 47, that's not divisible by four. It's not because the last two digits. So anyway, some of you guys might want to, if you're new and you've never had this before, you might want to take a, you might want to, I was going to say take a picture. You might want to just write this down. It might help you. Um, but the thing I want you to do now is again, just tell me, see these three questions here, E, F, and G. Tell me, you know, looking at these numbers, two, three, four, five, six, nine, and 10, 56 is divisible by which of these? And you're going to have more than one answer. I mean, you should. And then look at 132 and 135. And then just write down, is 132 divisible by two? If yes, you write two down. Is 132 divisible by three? If yes, write that down. Is it divisible by four? If yes, write this down. I think that's the end of this video tutorial. Let me go to the next page and find out. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about this. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. It lasted eight minutes and 15 seconds long. Talk to you later, bye-bye.